Hello, my name is David Craft. Today I'm going to talk to you about the lemon test. Now for many years now, um, scientists, particularly psychologists, have been looking at um, ways to measure hypnotizability. And there are two main scales uh, that do this. Um, first is the Harvard scale um, and the second is the Stanford scale and I suppose the Stanford scale is the gold standard it's more robust it has test retest reliability um, and is one that's used most commonly today to measure um, hypnotic susceptibility um, and there are various versions of this that have been revised um, over the years the Stanford scale can be um, divided into type A, B and C. Um, type B is very similar to A, um, however there are revisions um, that were made in order to uh, reduce or eliminate hopefully the practice effect. Um, so uh, um, the, the, the second test, the B, um, is quite helpful. It starts off with eye closure and suggestions of eye closure. You then got hand lowering, uh, moving hands apart, a animal hallucination, which is a mosquito, taste hallucination, um, and arm rigidity, dream uh, suggestions, age regression, arm immobilization, um, another taste um, suggestion, hallucinated voice, negative visual hallucination, and, and post hypnotic amnesia. So the lemon test um, is, we're testing um, respons uh, responsiveness to suggestion in all of these tests. And um, we're, we're trying to focus on all the sensory modalities, visual, auditory, tactile, olfactory, gustatory, and kinesthetic. The lemon test, well, um, the problem with these is that the lemon test is, is technically um, gustatory test but um, it could also be olfactory and you know some visualize the lemon some um, taste the lemon some smell the lemon but most people do a combination of those but nevertheless it's um this is the lemon test a quite a useful test to see uh, whether people are hypnotizable you try to make the suggestions as vivid as possible um, so you give suggestions that you're tasting um, the lemon in your mouth um, and if you can taste the lemon uh, the, the, the test has been successful. So um, it, it, I'm not going to demonstrate this test because um, uh, it's important not to demonstrate um, hypnosis on the internet. Um, I am bound by the uh, ESH uh, rules which I happen to agree with that we should not demonstrate hypnosis uh, to uh, the lay community. Um, but I can give you um, information about the lemon test and give you examples of, of some of the suggestions that one um, might make. So for example, you might imagine going into your kitchen um, and reaching for a lemon, um, looking at the shape of the lemon and the color of the lemon. Um, you might touch the lemon um, and feel the weight of the lemon in your hands. Um, and once you've done that, you might um, smell um, the lemon uh, and sniff the acidity of the lemon. And after you do that, it's important to, to give some sort of story that you're in your kitchen and you've got a lemon and you cut it with a knife and you can smell the citric acid. Um, perhaps you can taste it dripping into your mouth or squeezing the lemon in, into your mouth tasting the acidity of the lemon um, and then you might give a suggestion that I wonder where in your tongue um, it um, is the most acidic um, bursting with juice and so forth these are the sort of um, suggestions you um, you make and it is quite acidic it's, um, you know, it's around two or three and the pH is about on that two or three do I use lemon tests in the consulting room uh, no so I feel that um, I would do therapy with everyone, with the, whether they're hypnotic virtuosos or not. Um, however, it is a useful t um, test um, for scientific purposes. Um, and 
um, th that's all from me um, on the lemon test. Um, any questions, uh, please uh, write them uh, below. If you wish to refer a client to me, please do so. Uh, my numbers are below. Uh, I've got the Harley Street Clinic and the Lenfield Clinic. And thanks for listening. Bye-bye.